Fire cider gets me fired up. Fire and decider. There are some good sounding things in here. I need this book. <laughs> Hi there, it's me, Lottie. And today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about <gasps> fire cider. It is time for me to do another fire cider video. I don't even think the one that I did counts as a video because it literally was, what was that called? Oh yeah, Flipagram. <laughs> Flipagram, remember the app that only lasted a five minutes? And it was just a quick, but you know, it gets the job done if somebody wants to know how they, you know, a fire cider recipe. And everyone should have at least one fire cider recipe. Fire cider has a special place in my heart because first of all, it is one of the first things I learned how to make. And it is very delicious and good for colds and flu and things that give you the chills. It's also awesome as a marinade or to use in greens or beans or make it into a salad dressing. Um, so many things can be done with fire cider. And fire cider originated who knows when. I mean, vinegar has been around since... I don't know, probably since the first batch of wine went bad and somebody said, don't throw that out. We can use that for something. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, oxymels are referred to in Egyptian literature and go all the way back to the Caribbean as far as different beverages that were made to keep folks hydrated that were out in the heat, you know, mixtures of vinegar and fruits and honey and that kind of thing. And of course, you know, it's made its way over here and people have been making fire cider for generations. But at one point in time, not too long ago, that whole notion of the community owned aspect of fire cider was challenged in a very real way. There was a company that decided they wanted to trademark the name Fire Cider and it didn't go very well. You can read all about it at the link below. I will include that link. And one of the people who has been making Fire Cider literally for decades, Rosemary Gladstar, was one of the first herbalists to push back on this notion of trademarking tradition. So it's a great story that had fortunately a positive ending with fire cider being ruled as a common term. It couldn't be trademarked. And in the process, this book came to be. Rosemary Gladstar is a internationally known herbalist who has created a number of courses and curriculums and written a number of books about herbal health and wellness. And in those books, um, Fire Cider is included. So as a means of documenting how widespread and um, prolific Fire Cider is in our communities, she and a number of people put together this collection of 101 fire cider recipes. And let me tell you, there are some good sounding things in here, okay? Everything from Texas fire cider, fire cider toasted nuts, vinegar cured wild mushrooms, fire cider glazed sweet potatoes, maple mustard fire cider salad dressing, fire cider stir fry, and more. I mean, and there's so many contributing herbalists like Nicole Telks, Nancy Phillips, 
Mason Hutchinson. What up though, Mason? <laughs> Margie Flint. All these wonderful herbalists once again came together to create this book. And I am looking so forward to getting off into it. So what I did this year, which I'm going to do from from now on every year for the rest of our lives is do a major firesider build firesider push in the fall because I just want it to be in the hands of everyone it truly is one of the easiest herbal tonic concoctions that can be created and again it is of the people so last year in October I had a major firesider build called fire and decider fire and decider shout out to Rick James and Tina Marie for that one and it was amazing it was rainy it was so cold and it was rainy but let me tell you something people still showed up we made uh, I don't know how many jars of fire cider got made and taken home. We camped out. We used it as an opportunity to try our skills in that kind of weather. We made our fire cider. So it would be just an awesome community thing, right? Every year to get a bunch of people together and make fire cider. I wrote all about the case in an upcoming issue of Riverwise magazine. By the time you're seeing this, hopefully it'll be up online or at least out in print and it will be up online shortly thereafter. But you can read all about the case and all about our efforts at pushing fire cider out into the public whereby making fire cider was a means of resistance, right? So fire cider helped to build your resistance and we were taking a stand for the resistance against corporatism and capitalism and the notion that you can just identify the power and the profit in a folk medicine and take it and trademark it so that you are the only one who can use that term, but you're going to ride the coattails of the decades of history that Firesider had. That's narrative co-optation at its finest. Okay, had to have that social justice moment. Anyway, this is the book that came about as a result of that. First of all, this is a beautiful book. The paper stock that it's made from, it feels really nice. It is a, uh, it just, it's a matte finish, but there's some <laughs> beautiful little metallic stars in here. And you see it's by Rosemary Gladstar and Friends. I love that. The illustrations are absolutely gorgeous throughout the book. It's beautifully designed. Ooh, smoky Bloody Mary. Now see, we need this. I need that in my life right now. I love how everyone has their version. Smoky Fireside Cider. Oh, this one is called I'll Remember This Cider. Love that. This is called Tupelo treat. Oh, this is a nice little essay. What I love about fire cider. This is such a cool book. Oh, right next to Habanero Hot Fire Cider. So, you know, and then of course, here's Fire Cider 101. There's Elderberry Fire Cider. Rosemary Gladstar's original Fire Cider. Facial toners, Oxymel's. Uh, chutney at any rate I could keep going on and on and on this is a fabulous book I mean I think it is I haven't even gotten into it yet I'm really excited to get into it and you know what else I'm even more excited to do give you one <laughs> hey 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 it's a subscriber giveaway I ordered two copies I ordered two copies so that when I hit 300 subscribers, and it's not that far away, when I hit 300 subscribers, 
I'm gonna do a giveaway. And so not only will I be digging around in this book and making all the things that are in it, you can too. <laughs> I love doing this. <laughs> anyway, I need to make a fire cider video. Maybe I will select a recipe from fire cider. <laughs> 101 zesty recipes for health boosting remedies made with apple cider vinegar by Rosemary Gladstar and friends. So stay tuned for a how to or not even a how to more like a demo because you know, like I said, it's it's pretty easy to make, but I'm going to make a nice demo video because I am just looking forward again to getting into this book and just really um, experiencing all the different twists and turns that people have put on their fire cider. Do you make fire cider? If you already make fire cider, what are your, I mean, if you're willing to share, it could be a secret recipe. I get it. But what makes your fire cider so awesome? I'm going to tell you mine, what I did this year. We added lemongrass and rose hips fresh from the backyard the young people the kids were able to go snip them and collect them and we cut it up and added it right into our fire cider it added a nice flavor and an extra amount of vitamin c so that's what we did this year like i said i'm gonna be doing fire cider builds every year with as many people as possible and continuing to tell the story of how the fire cider got free. And it's an important story because like I said, narrative co-optation is real. And this is but one example of it, but it can be a tool. It can be a discussion tool. It can be a deconstruction tool. It can be a way to familiarize yourself with a media narrative and the history and how it's really hard to pinpoint indigenous remedies and wisdom and what might be folklore or whatever, but it is the foundation on which our knowledge rests. And it is not okay that other people just swoop right in and claim that they are the pioneers or they are the founders or they are the first because hey at this day and age I mean I find it hard to believe there's a first in almost anything you know you can trace it back give some credit give credit where credit is due well that's not gonna take away from you but give credit where credit is due you know and don't try to sequester information off into your own little profit making, you know, operation, right? Anyway, okay, I'm getting riled up again. Fire cider gets me fired up. <laughs> Especially as it relates to community medicine and, you know, what we can be doing to take care of ourselves. You know, it, it needs to be accessible. It needs to be affordable. It doesn't need to be held in the upper echelons of some, you know, corporate herb store or tonic distributor somewhere. This is of the people medicine by the people for the people right so anyway i hope that you're as excited as i am i hope you're so excited that you're gonna maybe tell somebody to subscribe to my channel <laughs> or you might decide to just order the book for yourself and i would love to know what you think about it again this is how i'm walking off into 2020 with this whole book of 101 fire cider recipes so our next fire cider build is about to be on and popping. So anyway, I hope you are having a great day or night, whichever it may be. And I will see you at the next video. And until then, take care. Fire and desider. Fire and desire. I wasn't very, 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 very nice, you know. Sugar, 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 sugar. sugar.